Today I want to talk about an important statistical concept, distributions. When you look at a variable, you always have different values. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a variable. It would be a constant with a constant value. You could inspect a variable's values by simply printing out a table. Well, so for example, this right here, this is n denotes the observation. So n always stands for the number of the observations. So well, it could be observation number one, number two, number three, number four. And we have our variable that is, that could be height in meters. Uh, for example, observation number one is 1.8 meters. Number two is 1.72. Number three is 1.77. And number four could be 1.62 meters. Mm. If you don't have a lot of observations, you could simply look at your table to get a clue how your data looks like. But in Cleometrics, most of the time we're, we're dealing with way more observations, so we're drawing graphics. Let's say you want to know the height of the male population in uh, Manchester in 1940, for example. Um, again, we have our data in tabular form, there would be one gigantic tabular. And now what we do is we draw an x-axis, this here, this is our x-axis. And we need a y-axis. This is our y-axis, okay? So on our x-axis, we put in the, the possible values for our variable height. So you see, see it right there. This is the value for all, for all um, males uh, less than 1.5 meters. This is 1.51 to 1.6 meters and so on and so on up to more than 2 meters. Mm, again, this is completely made up data, so um, it doesn't have to make sense. Um, so, um, notice that I grouped our data. You'll see why I did that. Now, all we have to do is use our data to draw a bot chart. So, what did I do? I have the number of observations right here. I have the, um, well, the possible number of observations in our data set in thousands. So this is 80,000, 70,000, 60,000, 50,000, and so on. And what I do now is I simply draw a bar chart. So how many observations do I have that are less than 1.5 meters tall? So it could be 10,000. 10, so the next thing, I'll, I'll do the same thing with people that are 1.51 meters up to 1.6 meters tall, so that the, those people could be, say, 30,000, for example. The same thing for the next group, could be 40,000, 1.71 to 1.80. This could be, well, let's say 70,000. The same group, this, same right here and for people more than two meters okay so just look at the chart and think about what you see just think think about it well most people seem to be in the group of 1.71 to 1.8 meters right if we look at the extremes we see that there are not a lot of people in the extremes not a lot of people are are more than two meters tall and not are less than 1.5 meters uh, small, so to say. Um, this is what we call a normal distribution. Let me draw a line for this. This is a normal distribution, okay? Up, okay, it looks okay. So this is our normal distribution. We have a peak right in the middle. This is our peak, right in the middle and our curve flattens out symmetrical when it approaches the extremes on both sides. There are other distributions, but the normal distribution is one, or, or is the most important one, and you'll encounter this distribution quite a lot, although it will never be as perfect as this curve. This is a perfect, or, well, my drawing skills are not that perfect, but this ought to be a perfect um, normal distribution. Now we can calculate the mean or the average. The mean or the average is the center of our distribution. Now look at our distribution. Where do you think is the center? It's right at the peak of our distribution. This is the mean, this is the average. Um, so in this case, the mean can actually give us great information. 
if you'd say most of the male population in Manchester was about 1.71 to 1.8 meters tall, you'd be absolutely right. But just of curiosity, imagine your data would look like this. So, just imagine it would look like this. So, <clears throat> imagine your data would look like this. I, I know this looks a bit weird. Um, so, where would our average be? Well, this is a problem. Our average would be approximately somewhere in this area, somewhere here. Why is that? That is because we have these two extreme values or a lot of values go to the uh, to the left tail of our distribution and a lot of values are concentrated in the right end of our distribution so both extremes would well sort of neutralize each other so the center of our distribution would be right here that's why our average would be right in this area um, now, would it make sense to say most of the male population in Manchester was about, what did I say, 1.71 to, uh, let's say, 1.90 meters tall? Would that make sense? Of course it wouldn't. Our average doesn't tell the story at all. Um, why is that? This is what we would call, so this is what we would call a bimodal distribution. A bimodal distribution. And a bimodal distribution has two peaks, one over there and one over there. There could also be a multimodal distribution with more than two peaks. So just imagine I would draw another line that goes up here as well. Or and uh, th th there could be infi inf an, an infinity numbers of um, of um, um, uh, peaks. That would be a multimodal distribution. Our normal distribution, that was a unimodal distribution because it had only one peak. So again, if you have one peak, it's a unimodal distribution. If you have two peaks, it's a bimodal, dis a bimodal distribution. If you have more than two peaks, it's a multimodal distribution. So in this case, I would argue the average is not the best indicator for how your data looks like. We could use the mode instead. I'll write that down. We could use the moat. Uh, we could use the moat. What is a moat? A moat is simply the most prominent value. What would be the most prominent value in our bimodal um, distribution? It would be right there. Because most observations fall in this group. So the moat in our bimodal example would suit our case much, much better. 